okay, I have another movie plot, and this, this movie is based on an, an, a very big, messy St. Bernard dog named Beethoven. I'm going to talk about what a few of the movies. I'm going to talk about the fourth one, the fifth one, and most importantly, the first one. So we'll start with the first one, then we'll get into the others. So, two thieves, Harvey and Vernon, and one night steal a group of puppies from a pet store. One of them, being a St. Bernard puppy, manages to escape. And the next morning, he wakes up in a neighborhood and he sneaks into the Newton family's house. One of the members of the family, George, who is the father, he's a control freak and a workaholic. He does not want a dog in the house. But his wife, Alice, and their children, Rice, Ted, and Emily, convince him to take the dog in. And that night, they try and figure out a nice name for the dog, but they can't figure it out. Until Emily plays a portion of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony on the piano, and that convinces the others to call the dog Beethoven. And over the months, Beethoven quickly grows into a large dog, and George must clean up after the, the lovable but slobbery mischievous animal. The dog then becomes a very important part of the family. He helps Rice talk to a boy she has a crush on, scares off bullies from harming Ted, and saves Emily's life when she falls into an irresponsible babysitter's swimming pool. George still maintains his dislike, which is further er, aggravated when the dog's antics ruin a barbecue that he is hosting for Brad and Bree Wilson. Unpleasant inventor or er, capitalist looking to invest and swindle him out of his car or er, air freshener er, form. The Newtons take Beethoven to veterinarian Dr. Herman Varnick for a routine medical exam. Unaware, he is secretly involved in unethical and deadly animal experiments. Dr. Varnick tells George of a supposed mental instability among St. Bernard's that make them potentially dangerous and violent and advises him to watch Beethoven closely for any signs of viciousness. However, Dr. Varnick seeks large-skulled dogs such as St. Bernard's for an ammunition test. Under the guise of doing a follow-up exam on Beethoven, Varnick visits the Newton's home and after applying fake blood onto his arm and Beethoven, Varnick provokes Beethoven into a fight and convinces George that the dog attacked him. But Emily protests that the attack was fake. She saw everything. Varnick warns George that Beethoven must be t turning aggressive and must be put to sleep. Or else he will have no choice but to press charges. Against the protests of Alice and his kids, George reluctantly takes Beethoven to Varnick's office. On the way there, George remembers that his father took the family dog to be put down at the vet, which George never forgave him for. George fears that his family will similarly hate him. When George returns home, his fears are proven true when his family leaves the dinner table. George changes heart when Alice pushes him to consider the impact on his family. The Newtons go to Varnick's office to find Beethoven, but he lies and claims the dog has already been euthanized. However, George remembers that the receptionist told him that Beethoven would not be put to sleep until the next day. George then notices that Varnick has no bite marks on his arm, and realizing Emily is telling the truth, George completely decks Varnick in the face, knocking him back into the cage. 
the Newtons follow Varna to his warehouse where Beethoven is kept. Beethoven manages to escape his cage but is recaptured by Harvey and Vernon, who are revealed to be working for the doctor. As Alice uses a, a phone booth to call the police, George goes to the top of the building and spies through the skylight. The skylight crashes and George falls to the ground in front of Varnick. Just before Varnick was preparing to shoot Beethoven in the face is with a gun. But before he can, he is impeded by Sparky, who is a captive Jack Russell Terrier that Beethoven had earlier befriended. Sparky runs over and, and bites Varnick in the crotch, causing him to fire a shot into the air. Ted hears the gunshot and drives the car through the warehouse. The car then crashes into a cart and launches numerous syringes into Varnick, sedating him. As the Newtons reunite with Beethoven and free all the captive dogs, they notice Harvey and Vernon trying to escape, but Ted sends the dogs after them. Harvey and Vernon escape into a junkyard only to be attacked by four ferocious Doberman guard dogs. Dr. Varnick, Harvey, and Vernon are arrested for animal cruelty. Mm. The Newtons are praised as heroes in the news, and George takes a new liking to Beethoven. The Newtons go to sleep, saying goodnight to Beethoven and all the other dogs they rescued. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting experience. But you're about to hear more about what Beethoven does in the fourth and fifth film. Okay, let's get into the fourth one. So, Richard Newton checks in with his two children, Sarah and Brennan, before school. Sarah is much easier at getting up while Brennan loves to sleep. So Richard and his family are still watching Beethoven while Richard's brother George and his family are still out of town for business. The children love their St. Bernard dog Beethoven, whom they are keeping for relatives, but their parents do not and consider him to be a messy, messy experience. Richard and his wife Julia uh, get completely fed up hard and when Beethoven's causing so much trouble. Just giving you an idea of, of some of the stuff that Beethoven did in that house, he, he completely he trashed the, the house uh, when he was eating food out of a garbage can. He took the toilet seat from the upstairs bathroom. He, he, he slobbered up the wife's clothes. And after er, eating a big bowl of cookie dough, oh, Beethoven and threw up on her. And he trapped as Richard's art studio and made him burn his hands with a pot roast. So then the children decide that they're going to take Beethoven to a obedience training led by a former army sergeant. Brennan at one point falls in love with this girl named Haley, while Beethoven literally destroys the obstacle course one day. To top it all off, Beethoven hits the army sergeant in the groin with a leash, causing him to kneel over in pain. Meanwhile, across town, the rich Sedgwick family owns a pamper and well-behaved St. Bernard that looks exactly like Beethoven, except this one is named Michelangelo. So Michelangelo and the young daughter Madison and Cedric are friends, but her busy parents Reginald and Martha are always neglecting her. In fact, Reg is the only one who seems to try and play with her. Beethoven, and meanwhile, runs after a loose hot dog cart one day after the obedience train and, and ends up on a merry-go-round. 
Michelangelo has gotten loose as well and is now also on the same merry-go-round. Brennan and Sarah mistake him for Beethoven and take him home. The real Beethoven is mistaken for Michelangelo and is great grabbed by Jonathan Simmons, who is the Sedgwick family's butler, and is taken to their mansion. Sarah is surprised when Michelangelo wipes his feet on the welcome mat and folds the napkins with his teeth. <laughs> At dinner, the Sedgwicks notice the change in their dog, too. When he bolts Simmons to the to the ground to get a piece of turkey that night, and Beethoven hears Mass whimpering because of a bad dream and comforts her. At the next obedience class, Michelangelo leaves everyone in astonishment by finishing the entire new obstacle course while the sergeant is announcing the course. Meanwhile, Beethoven ruins a dinner party when a man named Nigel tries to dognap him. A therapist points out to Martha that the reason Michelangelo is acting this way is because he's the first one exhibiting symptoms. The therapist suggests that it may be because Martha does not care about anyone but herself. Richard is concerned about Beethoven and starts acting out to get Beethoven to misbehave again too. Richard drinks toilet water, he chases the mailman, etc. Michelangelo ends up catching on and starts behaving like Beethoven. Then the Sedgwick family starts playing fetch and swimming with Beethoven. But as the Sedgwicks and Beethoven are hiking, Nigel, who turns out to be Simmons' sidekick, kidnaps Beethoven and locks him in a warehouse for a ransom of $250,000. But Beethoven breaks out and secretly switches places with Michelangelo at the obedience graduation. The real Michelangelo is found by the Sedgwicks, and Simmons and Nigel are arrested by two FBI agents. The real Beethoven is found by the Newtons, and he graduates. The Sedgwicks and Newtons then meet up at, the, at a fork on the road. Though they never find out about the switchings of Beethoven and Michelangelo. Alright. Time to get into the last one. The fifth one. Okay. So, when Sarah Newton and Beethoven are sent to spend the, the summer with... It's Sarah's uncle, Freddy Kablinski, in an old mining town called Quicksilver. The mischievous Beethoven digs up a clue to the whereabouts of the legendary hidden fortune of two bank robbers named Mo and Rita Selig, who, who a long, long time ago were being chased through Quicksilver. by a load of police until they he took a, a wrong turn and fell into Quicksilver Lake and they drowned. <laughs> they had found the car but they didn't find that stolen money. So Sarah, Beethoven, Freddie, and their new friend Garrett they, they, they helped try and figure out all this secret Along the way, they get to meet the residents of Quicksilver, including the sheriff, who Freddie has the hots for. And I don't blame, and I don't blame him. And this sheriff is quite good looking. So they try everything. They go to the library and and find in and find the book that that tells a lot about about these two robbers. But the but the uh, owner of the library takes that book into his office and hides it up there.
and when Uncle Freddy, Sarah, and Garrett try and get back there, they are almost caught when when the alarm rings. Then the eight decided to start questioning people in in the town with the help of the sheriff. Eventually, they get their help. While at it, the, the, they realized that the that the uh, that the librarian and Mr. Giles, his his last name was actually Selly. He was related to Mo and Rita. But they soon realized who the real old, old culprit was. It was the mayor, Harold Herman. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.